Who would win? That is the question being asked today about Doki Bird. Formerly Selen Tatsuki of Nitisanji English, now terminated from that organization nearly two weeks ago. As now on the case is Legal Mindset. A Florida man lawyer looking at this particular case piece by piece and drawing numerous conclusions. While we'll be joined by Gator, aka The Gator Gamer, for VTuber expertise. Legal Mindset here giving his opinion on the contract termination being tweeted out. Is inviting a legal nightmare as corporate counsel like you know I, I people know me from doing uh representing special districts as well you know i did that when i was younger when i was uh, younger as a younger attorney in florida representing reedy creek which is why i covered the disney issues but later on i was corporate counsel for a very large corporation we would never post a notice of contract termination publicly this this is insane right this goes to her lawyer this goes to her right that's about it well here's the kicker it didn't even go to her. She did not find out that she was terminated until a friend of hers messaged her and said, hey, you know, what, what's going on? You know, I just got this thing about you getting terminated. And, it just, you know, I mean, imagine like finding out that you got fired from somebody messaging you. And now further on the subject of Selen Tatsuki's contract and where that jurisdiction lies. What they're saying here is, okay, we terminated Selen, and I am going to summarize, due to breaches of essentially their rules, right? Of their policies. And that would amount to breach of contract. Now that is something I'm generally familiar because breach of contract is, is, uh, is fairly international, right? The rules regarding a lot of other different types of law, criminal law, uh, even certain types of civil law are different, but breach of contract is actually one of the things that's pretty international. And just so you guys know, because one of the big issues is venue, 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 venue. With breach of contract, typically you look at where the defendant's headquarters is, where their place of business is, and also if it's stipulated in the contract or stipulated anywhere else or wherever the work is primarily taking place, which clearly would be Japan. So for the breach of contract claim, the venue would, would definitely be Japan. But that does not preclude sell-in slash doki bird from bringing other claims in Canada that are not available in Japan. Next, we have the topic of potential defamation. But even here, guys, what they've said is already pretty defamatory if it's not true. And there's some of this that even with what we've, the, the facts that I've seen so far, appears may not be true, right? So, and, and once again, guys, a lot of, I know a lot of what's out there is like speculation, right, Gator? Um, right. Certainly there's a ton of speculation out there. But it seems like if we talk about the this line here, which I would be concerned with, <clears throat> infringement on third party property rights. My understanding, Gator, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that she, in reality, did not violate anybody's copyright or IP laws that that she had permissions for everything that she did. Right. She had, she even reached out to the original author of the song that she used, Lily Pichu, and got her explicit permission and was actually working behind the scenes trying to get management to just kind of give the okay and reach out to these people. They didn't do it. So on her own behalf, she went and talked to these people and got the permission to use all of the assets, to use all of the art to use the song. Further now, we have a debunking of the doxing claim. Factually, so the information they're talking is information that was exchanged between lawyers and to the company. There was no threat of doxing there. There was no threat of public exposure, right? There was no, as far as we know, right? I have not seen any proof of that at all whatsoever, right? Um, at all. If anything, uh, I think probably Selen has more reason to be worried about doxing than the Niji Sanji uh, livers, like these three uh, Niji Sanji livers, because they clearly don't give a shit about personal information. They're just passing it around and not really caring who they, get, who they give it to. And now the question is, has Niji Sanji self-reported? If she has emails, texts for years, prove they lie. Yeah, and we'll see that come out if there's a case, obviously. There's reasons why you don't drop all the evidence in public. Niji Sanji's actually fucking up by self-reporting, by self-snitching, right? They should not be doing this. The fact they're doing this is just, like, mind-boggling. Uh, because Dane it gives says, her lawyer a chance to look over that and maybe possibly come up with a defense for it. 
Exactly. Selin's lawyer can just build the case, right? Or lawyers, because the I think she should have a Canadian lawyer and a Japanese lawyer. Selin, Doki Bird, if you're listening, lawyer up in Japan and in Canada. And further on, does Nichi Sanji have bad lawyers? Jeff Balthazar says, the thing that bothers me the most about this is the whole message doesn't feel like it was lawyer approved. It feels unrehearsed and unvetted. That black message was definitely lawyer reviewed. I just think that their lawyers are not that great. They're like the Disney lawyers, right? And I know this is something that the Niji Sanji defenders say. They say, oh, well, Niji Sanji is a is a company with lawyers, so therefore they're perfect. Wrong. I was a corporate lawyer. I can tell you right now, corporate lawyers are not Laffy Taffy. They 100% can fuck up, and sometimes they don't know what they're talking about at all. They've sat on their laurels having to do nothing. This is the biggest thing the Niji Sanji lawyers have handled ever. They probably have no scope of reference for this. This is their Titanic. They have no precedent for it. Don't pretend they know what they're doing. They're all panicking just like everybody else. Next up, can Doki Bird settle? Right. Donald Gills says, it would settle the day they want. They do not want to discover. Yeah, and... and they would try to, and, I, and by the way, I'm sure Doki would want to settle. I'm sure Doki would want to settle and get this done with, right? Um, is if it, if it survived a motion to dismiss, I think they would just pay out. It'd be better for the corporation to be smarter. If I was their corporate attorney, I'd tell them just to pay her. My pay her guess is what would wants. happen is they would they would try to settle and have both sides issue some sort of public statement like the matter yes. is handled. Please, you know, leave people alone They'd with an NDA, something like that. With it an, an NDA, NDA, so they can't talk about it. However, there are concerns for Doki Bird. So, regarding a recording, this was not intended to be anything other than a distribution test for a planning of a collaborative event between two people, which happened to be left over from one test recording. I never recorded any other conversations with anyone. So it wasn't even, she didn't even record it in bad faith. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's one party consent. So, fuck off. Fuck. Right. She has the right to do it. So, you right. know. I've asked my lawyer to convey that and communication that the document as it was written wasn't going to be released anywhere. And my lawyer did so when sending the document. Okay, I've got concerns here, guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is me being really fucking honest. I have some concerns about her lawyer. Okay, here's my concern. Reading this as a lawyer, right? He did. He could have offered to make a summary. He could have offered to make points. He could have offered to have a version that he could have done that removed a lot of private information that would hurt Doki. He could have protected her better there, I think, as a lawyer, right? And, and not knowing that there's a potential for disclosure and not telling her that we can give it to the lawyers. Because look, a job of a lawyer, what I do as a lawyer is I disclose all of the possibilities, okay? I, I think what he may not have done here is number one, told her this could be disclosed because it could. Right. And to lot and to, to, to pretend that it couldn't, she, you, you have to say there's a potential chance. And beyond that, change the information, alter the information, summarize the information uh, just a little bit better. I'm not saying that he's incompetent. I'm just saying that maybe he could have done better. Okay. That's me being harsh on Doki's order. That's not Doki's fault. Lawyer, right? Lawyer of Doki. Legal mindset estimating that total legal bills for Doki Bird, if Niji Sanji fights, could go upwards to half a million dollars. However, there is a way to make that significantly less expensive to Doki Bird. This case does give a foothold. However, it's regarding an arbitration clause, not regarding an employment contract and the choice of venue and employment contract. So there's a difference between arbitration and litigation. Arbitration is a different process. It's a different procedure. So the courts could distinguish this and say, no, this is a choice of law issue. It's not involving arbitration. It's involving litigation. And where's the litigation area? But at the same time, if they wanted to extend this case, if they want to say, no, 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 no. We're going to apply this because we're going to look at this case and we're going to look at it and say, Doki Bird, does not have that much money to go to Japan. She doesn't have the resources to go. She doesn't have the hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to Japan. We might find the provisions that might require her to go there as unconscionable and allow her to bring her case in Canadian court under Canadian labor law. And Doki Bird being Canadian, what potential laws in Canada has Niji Sanji broken? Uh, so what is personal information? So let's look at the scope of what personal information is and why they're screwed. 
Under Papeda, personal information includes any factual or subjective information, recorded or not, about an identifiable individual. This includes in any form, age, name, guys, name. It includes name. So if they have her real name, her doc's name, that would be a violation if she did not willingly give that to them, which she probably did not, of Papeda. Their Canadian ID number, their income, the amount they make, their ethnic origin. Look at this, blood type. Blood type, guess what they turned over to Niji Sanji? Guess what they turned over? Medical records. They turned over her hospital information. Guess what that probably has on it? Blood type. Probably has blood type. So if that was disclosed, there might be some issues there, Niji. You might be violating Papeda over here. You best be careful. Opinions, evaluations, comments, social status, and disciplinary actions. So if she included information about disciplinary actions that she faced, and let's say that she faced discipline from Alira. Let's say Alira was mean to her, but Ike didn't know about that. And Ike got that information. Violation of a beta. Nigel. Employee files, credit records, loan records, medical records, medical records. Uh oh. That's what she sent over. Existence of a dispute between a consumer and a merchant. Intentions such as attempt to acquire goods and services. How about the all the uh, intentions to create her products, to pay her suppliers? This is all Papeda stuff. Papeda does not specify the minimum level of connection that a company must have with Canada in order to be subject to its provisions. Let me read that again. Papeda does not have a minimum connection with Canada. There's no requirement of a minimum connection. There's no language which limits its application to business with a physical presence in Canada, nor are its provisions explicitly limited to personal information collection, use, or distribution solely occurring within Canada. Furthermore, the Act of Parliament was intended to protect personal information in cyberspace and e-commerce. Got them. Got them, baby. This is exactly what the intention of the legislation was. Therefore, this is the highlight. It is likely a foreign company operating only marginally in Canada, for example, by hosting a website available to Canadian citizens or entities, will be subject to Papeda. Gotcha. Gotcha. And now returning to that question of which jurisdiction would this court battle take place? We have this. Japan does not have the privacy law. They don't have a claim. And if a jurisdiction does not have a claim, uh, like they don't have that cause of action, the only venue is Canada. The only venue for the privacy claim is Canada. They don't have that claim in Japan. Now, Japan, Canada, and every civilized country that isn't running on sticks and rocks right, has breach of contract. Every country that has electricity and isn't in the middle of a civil war has breach of contract claims. You can bring that in any country. But when you're getting down to specific stuff like that, that's a cause of action that has to go in Canada. Now, vice versa, if you're bringing a uh, I IP infringement for moral rights, under Japanese copyright law or Japanese defamation law that's unique to Japan, you'd have to bring that in Japan. That's a unique jurisdiction for that. And just very quickly on the subject of graduations and their legality. Does graduation notice fall under PIPA? Um, no, I think that's something that they would mutually agree upon. If it's information you agree to release, that's not PAPEDA. Right. So if it's something that you both agree to release because you're graduating, that's not the pay down. And that was not all as Legal Mindset also looked over the comments recently made by DAF, aka 39 DAF, a very good friend of the now graduated member from Niji Sanji English, Joe Kanako. Legal Mindset saying of these comments by DAF. And these are all of these posts from uh, 39 DAF, right? And there's so many of them. But the ones I want to get to here 
are her legal comments, right? Because there's some legal comments in here that are just so wrong that I cannot not refute them because they're so bad, it's ridiculous. She talks about, okay, she's talking about the three people volunteered, said they disagree with comments, assume each person got different documents. Well, no, they, I mean, Vox said he reviewed everything. So he got most of the documents from what it seems like. She goes, the tweets Niji said, because if you want to sue for harassment, you already built a case and have documented proof of this exact harassment from specific people. Not true. Not true. If you are suing for harassment, you can get discovery. In lawsuits, there's something called discovery. Discovery is when you subpoena, when you deposition, when you request information, you get emails, you get text messages, you get all that goodies, all those good DMs. By the way, your Discord can probably be a record as well, particularly if it's public. And this, that's the one thing I would warn you guys is that increasingly social media, other stuff is becoming used in court. Uh, the standards are becoming more and more and more and more open towards the entry of social media. So just understand that. Be very, very careful, particularly if it's a public. This part here is such a dumb take. You have to build a case already. Wrong, dumb, wrong. Am I wrong for assuming if you sue for harassment, you need to name them for the case and have the burden of proof to support said case? Okay, so the plaintiff does have a burden of proof, and yes, he would have to use the real name. That's true. However, you could sue the company. You don't have to sue the individual VTubers. So it is possible, it is possible to sue Niji Sanji without exposing the VTubers. It's possible, but they would it would probably come up eventually. In all likelihood, it would come up eventually, right? And you could always focus on who did the harassment and just not dox everybody. If they didn't harass you or they weren't subject to that, you could just leave them out. You could leave their identity um, anonymous, right? They could be anons. That's totally fine. If, if they're not involved in the harassment. And the implications that EG isn't lying is really bad. The three talents came out in a video addressing the claims. The person uh, suing, there's nobody suing. There's nobody suing. There's no lawsuit. Guys, there's no lawsuit. Dumb take. 39 IQ take right there. When they themselves were specifically named by the person suing, nobody is suing. That's wrong, right? People just seem to be taking over everything that said face value for the person suing and not considering anything Niji says. No, we're actually, no, actually, that's not true. I'm considering what Vox said was true. I'm considering that what Vox said was 100% true, that he reviewed all the articles. I actually believe that he did that. Uh, does it make no sense that Niji wouldn't? be allowed to show documents to their talents when it is definitely implied individuals when the company would be named? Yes. Uh, in America, if something was deemed between lawyers, the ethical you know, responsibility would be to keep it between lawyers as like attorney-client work product, right? Or if there's a confidentiality agreement, yes, you could keep it out of the hands of the people in the company. That is possible. Uh, I think it'll be dropped because I don't I think the case is strong enough to warrant this much pushback from Niji and Livers. Um, that's actually a sign the case is strong. If there's pushback, then it's a strong case. If they don't push back, it's a bullshit case. Further legal mindset would discuss why Daph needs to be very careful with what she says. Uh, now Niji has proof of what she claimed was harassment, which I assume she didn't know would be shared because she didn't think the individuals would be notified that... Uh, she made each person a unique doc documenting said harassment. She doesn't know that. That's speculative. She knows nothing about what was made or not made. Nobody knows except for the lawyers and Niji Sanji. Unless, unless Niji Sanji is leaking the 39 DAF, which, by the way, could be a violation in and of itself, could be a further violation, particularly of Canadian privacy law. So I don't know where 39 DAF is, but, you know, wherever she's at, I hope it's not Canada. Uh, Doki is suing... Niji Sanji and individuals within Niji Sanji for no, she's not. There's no suit file and had documents detailing proof of harassment. There's no, there's nothing filed. There's no lawsuit. A threat of a lawsuit is not a lawsuit. She's Canadian. Is she Canadian? Oh, big L, big L in LA. Oh, yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> okay. I know the Canadian LA type. Yeah, I got you. I got you.
yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a big L that's a big L for her talking about this. Right. And if she's got these documents, which now it seems to me like, what do you know? What do you know? What does she know? I want to know. Th this isn't English, by the way. This is me trying to translate from 39 IQ to English. Uh, she says right here, me being friends with Niji Livers means jack shit in the court of law. It might, it might, Daph. It might if they leaked information. You look at this quote from her. Let me, let me zoom in here. You see it right here, guys? Me being friends with Niji Livers means jack shit in a court of law it might if they passed you information if you are being an agent for niji sanji to break confidentiality it might to disseminate public uh, private information it might i would be very careful now i'm not saying whether she's done that yet or not but i think that she's implying a lot here i hope she does not put out further information i hope she's very careful about what she says um, you know, here in the future. Once again, those being comments from Daff at 39 Daff with over 400,000 followers on Twitter, over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube and 1.2 million followers on Twitch.tv. Also being a very good friend of Kyo Kaneko, even before he had joined Niji Sanji English. Kyo yesterday graduating from that agency with his Streamlabs being taken down and yet Selen Tatsuki's still being available, expected to close out at the End of this month. That is next. We turn to Matara Khan of V Shoujo, who is now in Japan, asking, "Is it wrong to have Denny's as a first meal in Tokyo?" And earlier tweeting today, a karaoke room filled with friends laughing and drinking is my happiness. V Shoujo at this time even releasing V Shoujo's secret vacation in Japan promotional event. As Matara Khan would say of V Shoujo's Kaysan, Kaysan is so beautiful. Kaysan replying, "We finally met." But she's not the only one that met up with Matara as Matara would also tweet out, I met this girl in Japan the other day. She was cute, but a bit weird. Turns out we actually had met before and had a portrait together. Weird how life works. That being Dear Skewn, an idol otaku who also absolutely loves Metal Gear. If you know, you know. Replying to Matara, you are so obsessed with me, OMG. Matara replying, okay ma'am, who got me Valentine's gifts? Dear Skewn earlier this month saying to her new followers for a Count rocketing from 500 followers to now 145,000, saying even though you guys call me a nerd and dear skin and short, you're all pretty all right. And further, as Matara Khan would say, it's the type of night where Onigiri and I are trying to explain the Bermuda Triangle to Kamigu. That being Kami, another old friend of Matara's, if you know, you know. Saying to Matara, I can smell you, and also enjoying her time around girls, while also addressing another topic saying, let's just all hope that whatever the outcome is, it's for the best. I have my own opinions on this, but I always have hope that things aren't as bad as they seem. I'm always here for you if you need anyone. And further, Matara would tweet out, spending time with my cousin babe wife this week, that being cooking VTuber Geary. The two collabing as VTubers and also IRL streaming, Geary remarking Mata is a real one, and Matara saying Onigiri is the freaking best. Also in Japan with V Shoujo is Kuro. Letting us know, I sung and drunk way too much, I'm going to die. Alongside Japan has been so great, though I do miss streaming. Also checking in on fellow male VTuber Axel Serios of Hollow Stars English, saying to him, hope you had a great Valentine's. Axel replying, I was sleeping the whole day and had a meeting with my manager at like five. Next up with V Shoujo, we have Zentrea. As per streams charts, was the sixth most watched female streamer on Twitch for the second week of February. While unfortunately, Zentrea is f***ing dead. That coming by way of a freak accident when Zentrea was revealing her V-Day model, referenced here by Kuen, complete with these scrap designs. Kuen also offering up this Buster Zen. While on Valentine's Day, Zen would release a new cover of Take Me Home Country Roads, and also was a part of the Valentine's Day 2024 V Shoujo collection, including desk mats, posters, and more. Yurina saying, I had the amazing opportunity to work on Zen, Haruka, and Hime's Valentine's voice pack illustration. Zen also having teased an M. Rage bomber jacket, which for a time was up on the website and has since been taken down. More on that to come. Well, Zentrea would also show this Discord conversation saying, uh-oh. That being from Henya. Not happy with Zen making this comparison on stream. Henya saying, what the heck Dayo? And then appropriately teabagging Zentrea. Henya also offering up this happy Valentine's Day Dayo. While she has also received this new nervous wiggling mouth talk. 
Boggle, and also revealing something else coming up in April. Yeah, I'm planning new outfit. I'm planning new outfit right now. Nip. Yeah, it should be April. It should be April. And speaking of plans, we have this upcoming U2's figure, initially showing this product defect, giving Henya horns on her head. That now being corrected for the final product. Henya announcing a giveaway of these figures for three winners and saying good luck, Dio. Next with V Shoujo, we have Project Melody and her science team who received a happy Valentine's Day from her, saying I want you to remember this holiday comes in many forms, love for family, friends, partners, and especially you. Be kind to yourself today or else. Melody then showing off this young succubus teaser saying meet me in the web of darkness melody also being cosplayed by rena stating sorry i'm late because i just got back to london hashtag mel 34 as lastly with v shoujo today we have iron mouse now finally releasing the date of her upcoming concert satan gang being set for february 29th at 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern iron mouse also releasing her very first voice pack daryl vanessa barnes saying i did audio and sound design for iron mouse's valentine's day voice pack go check it out as that is all for today feel free to like comment and subscribe below send in your vtuber news to our discord as we'll have more things vtubers say for you soon and now many wondering is this the beginning many of you are speculating if the niji i love the way he's saying that it just sounded like such a traditional like uh like cnn or like fox news anchor like listen to it again and now many wondering, is this the beginning? Many viewers speculating. That was really good.